rise and shine. Let's go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next episode of Pre Medication. Today, I will skip the funny business and we're just going to jump into it. We are talking about the truth behind undergraduate. I'm sure you've all heard about the importance of having research on your application to medical school. While research experience can be an amazing thing, it can supplement your application, expose you to new things, teach you about the process of scientific inquiry, methods, processes, analysis, data entry, all of those things. However, it's not everything. At the end of the day, there are some things that every student should be gaining from a research experience. So in this video, I want to talk about all those great things that research has to offer, but some of the obstacles that you might face if you choose to pursue this path as something to add to your application, and maybe a better way to look at it if this is something that you're thinking about. So let's talk about the great stuff first. Also, I apologize for the strength of my voice. I'm getting over a cold. But anyways, research can be loosely defined as the mechanism through which medical knowledge is advanced. Getting involved in it has the potential to amplify your passion for medicine and continue to expose you while also giving you an opportunity to find the solutions to some of the biggest medical problems that we face. And especially if you're in the right lab at the right time and with the right mentors, you could get on a publication as well, which is a pretty big deal, considering at the time you might only be an undergraduate. Getting on a publication will most definitely help your application stand out. It's not everything, and you don't have to get one, but it would definitely help. But all of these lovely things, and that's not even including the relationships that you can build with your lab mates and mentors and PIs, all of those things come with a price. So the first of which being there's a huge amount of stress when it comes time to start applying to labs and finding the one that works best with your interests. Students often are concerned whether or not they can find a research position since many of the labs out there are looking for students who have a little bit of research experience under their belts. Students will ask, how can I get accepted to this lab position when they're looking for students who have research experience and I don't have any yet? And then that fundamental question of, how do I find my first experience so that I can get access to other opportunities down the road comes up. And don't worry, you are most certainly not alone. Just about everyone who's looking for research their very first time wonders this. And there are many labs out there who take students who have no previous research experience. Everybody has to start somewhere. However, there are a couple of things that immediately come to mind that you can do to help your application stand out if you are in the position where you don't have any previous research experience. Those things include setting up a meeting with the PI well before you'd like to start working there to discuss their work and your interest in it. I've mentioned this in other videos, but it's a really great way to develop a rapport with the PI without making it a transactional experience. So you can email them and simply express interest in their work and let them know that you'd love to talk more about it. You don't have to mention that you're going to be looking for a research position soon. However, you can if you'd like. Planting the seed of your enthusiasm and dedication well in advance of your research position search will go a long way when it comes time to formally express your interest in working with them. They'll come to think of you right away when you send them an email one or two months down the road. Another thing you can do is customize your CV to amplify the skills most relevant to each particular position. You've probably heard before that you can change your CV based on the general thing that you're applying to, whether you're applying to a research program or a more formal job. However, why not simplify your CV and adjust it to each position? For example, if you're applying to a clinical research lab with a lot of patient-facing work, make sure that your interpersonal skills are standing out on your CV, whether that's community engagement, peer support roles, like tutoring, and things like that. If you're applying to a wet lab that requires a lot of technical skills, highlight the excellent work that you did in your chemistry lab as you executed each experiment and report with diligence. Those are things that you definitely have access to as an undergrad that will demonstrate the skills that you can bring to this lab. Lastly, you could leverage the connections you've made with professors, mentors, career center advisors, and others that would help you gain prestige in the eyes of your PI. So you won't likely need a letter of recommendation to apply to work in a lab, but this application process is dominated by cold emails and hopefully warmer conversations. So 
getting those emails in from mentors and others like that who can advocate or speak on your behalf can definitely help. However, it's not required by any means. If you don't have it, that's just fine. This is just another way to help you stand out a little bit. You found a lab, you've gotten in, and you're about to start your work. First things first, you've got to master your organization and time management skills. You could be spending upwards of 10 to 15 hours a week at this lab, and they have high expectations of you. Oftentimes, they might forget that you're a student who has other obligations besides just the work that you're doing in the lab, which is a blessing and a curse. It's nice for them to value you that much and want you there that much, but you still have studies and other extracurriculars to focus on. So find the tools that work best for you and understand that the time that you're spending in your lab is time that you won't be spending on your schoolwork or on any other extracurriculars that you enjoy. While the lab work is incredible, that is a sacrifice that you're making on behalf of your schoolwork and the other activities on your plate. Not necessarily a terrible price, but a price nonetheless. In addition to all of that, once you start working at your lab, you'll realize that every department or center works differently. Oftentimes, from an administrative standpoint, having a student there for a short-term period, like one semester, can be more disruptive rather than productive for the team. And that is a hurdle that they have to jump over mentally before they hire you. But even once they do hire you, that's something that's definitely playing into the work that you're allowed to do. So when you're thinking about pursuing research, I advise longevity over bouncing around between labs. You're PIs and administrative staff will definitely appreciate that more and building strong foundations and connections in one place over time looks much, much better than being in 10 different labs across your four years of college. This fact alone that departments vary between how much you can do and who you'll be working with and the work that you'll be doing really demonstrates that it's not necessarily the work or the research material that's most important. It's the people and the connections that you make. That's what's most important at the end of the day and what's really going to benefit and propel your medical school application forward through acceptance. It's not just about the paper that you write or the bullet point that you then get to add to your CV. If you finish all of your research experience and have nothing besides that bullet point to talk about, what have you really gained? The student who maybe didn't get a publication or didn't make a poster, but made an incredible connection with their mentor and maybe a PhD student that was in their lab that they shared lots of fun times with and learned so much from, and they really reaffirmed their passion for this process of solving problems and doing so on a team, and they can tell that story to an admissions committee member, that's the student that's going to get into medical school. And that benefit right there is really what levels the playing field for all students who are interested in participating in research. Not all of us can get into the biggest labs working on the most groundbreaking research that consistently publish to the biggest journals around. As long as you can get in someplace, do work that you're interested in and passionate about, and build the connections so that your work can be impactful, but also your place there can be impactful, is what's really important. So here's the truth. Research is amazing. It's an experience that I encourage you all to have in your very own way at least once on your journey to medicine. However, many pre-med students view research as a means to an end, that end being an acceptance to medical school. And I don't blame us. I mean, it's shoved down our throats since the very beginning. You have to get some research experience. It's so important. It'll ha help you get into medical school. But once you get there and start actually doing the work, I encourage you to view research as a means to a beginning. Use it as an opportunity to build connections with the people around you, your lab mates, get stories that you can carry with you and lessons that you can take with you after you leave that place. And find ways to reaffirm your passion for medicine. Find new reasons to pursue this path every single day. And if you take that approach, your experience will be all the greater for it. So as you consider whether or not research in a more traditional sense is for you, don't Forget that it's not technically required to go this traditional route by working in a wet lab or in a clinical research center. You can always create your own opportunities. If this route isn't for you, find a topic that you're passionate about and pull in the mentors that you already have established relationships with. Likely they will guide you. And who says you need a whole lab to be able to submit to a poster competition nearby or still create tangible outcomes from the work that you're doing? Get creative. 
With each and every medical school application cycle, more and more creative approaches are being discovered. There are no two paths that are exactly identical. Take advantage of that. Do something totally unique that maybe you didn't even think was possible. Creativity is valued far more than approaching your medical school application by checking off boxes here and there. At the end of the day, trust your gut, remember your why, and seek the advice of a great mentor or two. That will guarantee your success. That wraps it up for this video, pretty short and sweet, but I wanted you guys to get a full picture of what research as an opportunity and as an experience in more broad terms looks like. And what should you really be taking from it as you leave each and every research experience that you might have? I hope you all learned a little bit of something. Drop in the comments below some of your best and worst experiences in research. I definitely have my fair share of both ends of that spectrum. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.